Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're going to be number eight in our series on the line simply presented. Uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we ask for your presence here as we open your word together. As we continue to understand the things that you are unfolding, as these things that connect with Millerite history and with the history of the Adventist church. And we know, Lord, that um, these lines represent uh, events in our lives as well as the history of the world. And we pray, Lord, that we can participate and experience uh, the light that is unfolding to us. Be with us now. Through thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, good afternoon. I'm having a bit of trouble concentrating because I have some tooth pain, which is giving me a headache and also tense shoulders and a bad neck. So it's a little hard to concentrate, but I'll do my best. And um, when we... We're studying yesterday, I had gone through uh, a bit of a review of the lines. And the main thing that we did is we we looked at how these lines, first, we looked at how the lines um, interact with each other, how we can zoom into a line and, and zoom into a waymark and create a new line. And how, as these lines unfolded in this movement, we were doing this, but we just weren't aware of how we were doing this. And so one of the things that we saw we could do is we could take 9-11 um, and the two 9-11s in our line, and we could flip the second one over, and it becomes 11-9. And so in doing that, what we really had been doing is zooming into our line when we had this second line that was uh, uh, the empowerment or the arrival of the second angel, where we had the empowerment of the first angel, uh, would actually be 9-11. Um, nine so 9-11 aligns with August 11th, 1840. But later on, we came to see that 9-11 also represented April 19th, 1844. And so that was a problem that we struggled with in how we could how we could recognize which line we're in. Now, as we uh, progressed through the study, uh, what we came to see was um, uh, a line that I'm going to draw here. Um, so I'm going to draw actually a little bit of this again. So we're going to. Uh, go here. So when we look at a line, the way that lines always looked was three way marks because the line is a three step testing prophetic message uh, that develops and demonstrates two classes of worshipers. And in Millerite history, the simple way to look at this was 1798. Um, and, and originally, we would look at this as 18. 42, and then this as 1844, so October 22nd. So this would be an early uh, iteration of our lines. In some ways, uh, we actually had the line like this, August 11, 1840. Now, because remember when um, Jeff had the lines from our history, 1989, now sure, we're going to have um, the time of the end, 1798. But 
But in some ways, he could just, you could look at this as the first angel's message. And if you made this October 22, um, you know, this was 1,533 days. Jeff never had that way back then. But in 1989, this lined up with August 11, 1840. So, so this, even though this was 1798 as the time in the end, we lined it up here. That's how Jeff did it. And then he had uh, the Sunday law. And then he had the close of probation. Right. So Jeff kept zooming into these lines, um, trying to understand them. <clears throat> Now, we ended up with a line, so I'm not going to go over all these different lines, but we ended up with a line uh, that looked like this. November 9th, uh, uh, 2019. Can't quite see the top. Okay, so I'll move this up. Yeah. I know we got the reflection of the light there, but. So November 9th, 2019, and then we have, um, we had three way marks here. And this is gonna be December 25th, 2021. So this line here was, um, of course, it's gonna be 777 days. And what we were trying to do is line this up, line up with the line that we had in 2016, which was, and, and so when I put 2016 here, this isn't representing 2016. This is just how we understood the line in 2016, um, that we're going to have 9-11. We're going to have uh, midnight. So I'm going to put midnight in the center, even because it is the center. Um, as as a symbol in Millerite history. So I'm just going to change this a little bit. I'm going to put midnight, midnight cry like this. Um, oh, I've got to do that on this line, pardon me. Midnight, first, you know, do it like this. Midnight, midnight cry. And Sunday law, right? So this was our lines, how we understood it in 2016. Now, we understood that this was the first day of the first month. This was the fifth day of the fourth month. This was the first day of the fifth month. And this is the 10th day of the seventh month. <clears throat> and these two way marks are really one way mark because we always had this center way mark as one way mark. But for the first time, we actually had four way marks. Now, we know that this is Boston, and Boston is Midway, and this is Exeter. And the midnight cry is given here at Boston. And there are characteristics that happen here that we used to put over here, but now we know they happen here. So Snow is going to ride up on a horse in Boston because he's traveling quite a distance to get there and um, and he's only going to have a short time to speak and he's going to do basically a short question and answer period. He's going to give the midnight cry that Jesus is coming back on the 10th day of the seventh month. Um, he doesn't say October 22, even though that's the way it's recorded by Loughborough, but the question and answer ses session that Loughborough uh, places at Exeter, uh, at least as far as the location, he places in July, but he, but this isn't, Exeter isn't in July. This is, you know, April 19th. This is July 21st. This is August 15th. And this is October 22. Right? So, in the paper I wrote on the Midnight Cry of August 15th, 1844, I clearly show that because of Loughborough, 
his account, which is a secondhand account, is he confuses these two events. He conflates them. He mixes them, mixes them together. And he takes the events uh, that happened at Boston and he places them at Exeter. But he does place Exeter in July, not in August. Now, other writers, of course, correct that, but they take uh, the events that were mistakenly labeled as being at Exeter, but were in Boston. They take that and move them over here. That is, Boston is, is forgotten about. The only one who really mentions Boston is um, Joseph Bates. So Joseph Bates understands that. Um, and so in Adventist history, we, we know about Exeter, but we don't know about Boston. So when this movement first came to understand Exeter, it, that it was the first day of the fifth month, this is going to happen from 2013 to 2014, that we come to understand that. And then we get... At the end of 2015, we get uh, Boston, and then we get the line written like this. <clears throat> now, what we had done is we had talked about how we understood the line that I put over here, like 2029, written this one below this one, but I have it now written above. And this period of 777 days, uh, in this history, we know that this is uh, 187 days, right? This is a period of 777 days, and these two lines relate to each other. Now, um, so when we looked at midnight, uh, we had placed it here. I'm just going to make this over a little bit. So this is going to be uh, raffia. So raffia, which we initially understood, to, or not raffia, pineum. So this is going to be July 18th. We'll just say it that way. So we have July 18, 2020. And then we talked about this way mark here that lines up with the midnight cry. So we're going to say in this line, we have a line that lines up with this line. Because since... November 9th and 9-11 can be the same way mark. We then need to understand how this line, where this line fits into the scheme of the lines. And so when we came up with November 9th, 2019, we, we didn't really know what we were doing. We didn't really understand it. So I'm going to try my best to get us to understand this line. Now we had proposed a date uh, first, I think it was December 6th, 2020. And then we also had January 6th, 2021. So we're gonna put them here, December 6th, 2020 and January 6th, 21, right? Maybe put it like this. Let's put a dash there. Okay. Now, but if we were going to look at this line and we said, well, what lines up? This lines up with the fifth day of the fourth month in this line. Now, we know that in this history, what date is this? July 18th is what biblical date? Okay, so it's the 26th day of the fourth month. And December 6, 2020, what date was that? Around you, can you tell me what the date was? You got the calendar converter there. We'll put that in there. And we know that this was over here. This is the 20th day of the ninth month. Yeah, it, it is the 20th day of the ninth month, December 6, 2020. Okay. Yeah. And I just wanted to make sure. 
So it's the 20th day of the ninth month as well. Okay, so this is kind of odd, right? That we have these, these dates that, I mean, we'd look at and we say, well, December 6th and December 25th on our calendar, they're quite different dates. But in different years, these dates can line up in this way. So sometimes December 6th can be the 20th day of the ninth month. Um, now, the fact that they chose to write that declaration, so I'm gonna get rid of January 6th here. I'm just gonna put it over here. So you got January 6th. Now, January 6th, what was the biblical date for that one? 21. Uh, that'd be 1022. Yeah, so it's 1022, right? And we know that there was the December 25th bombing of Nashville, and that was the 10th day of the 10th month, uh, which is a symbol or, or a sign of the siege. And, and these ones end up being in an inclusive count 13 days apart. So there's, there's a whole bunch of things here that, that show us there is some other line here, right? So, so when we did that, and I was trying to understand it and figure it out, so we're going to draw this as another line. Uh, the date that we would naturally put here, though, would be March 27th, 2021, because we would have had these 252 days here, 252 days here, and then the 273 days here to get that uh, seven, seven, seven days. And so, um, but when we look at March 27th, 2021, does anything of particular note happen there within this movement? And especially for the symbol it is, a message to the Levites. So if we look at this line here in Adventist history and say this line parallels it, well, in some ways it doesn't at all. I mean, we have, uh, so how do we understand this line, these dates that we have? I mean, we can look at December 25th, 2021. And we can see how it relates uh, to this movement as far as light that comes to this movement. Right, because Stephen had, found on that day that there's 777 years from 457 BC to 321 AD in which the first Sunday law occurs. But I'm gonna propose that that line is correct. This is what God had given us uh, to understand. And, and we, we knew about this line for a long time. So in 2019, which, you know, is coming to be basically um, four years ago, uh, this line came together. And, and then it began to be presented uh, after September 7th, 2019, by Jeff and FFA. So when we look at a line, remember we have this line, but we can zoom into a way mark and we can expand it. So March 27th doesn't have anything particularly connected to it, um, but it does. So that means that this line here is connected in some other way to these way marks. Now, we do know there is this Levitical line, and I don't want to go too much in detail here, but we know there was 126 days from June 9th 
2018 to um, October 13th. Uh, Uh, 2018, right? This 126 days parallel Samuel Snow's letters. So we've dealt that with in, in the study uh, this morning. And, and then we know we have this 391.5 days that goes to November 9th, 2019. Right. And there's a bunch of other things in, in this structure, the 63 days from September 7th. And we have here another 63 days to January 11th. And this parallels, this also is divided into 63 and 63. And then we had 63 weeks, which was 441 days. From this date, to March 27th, 2021, a date on which nothing happens, right, that we know of, correct? Nobody knows of anything that happened on March 27th, 2021, but it is part of this structure and it exists as a symbol. So if it's a symbol and it's on this line, we, we need to understand it in some way. Now, one of the things that, um, that we know also about July 18th is it's going to be followed by uh, another date. Right. So it's going to have a date here that we generally don't talk about, but it's July 31st, uh, 2020, which is also July 18th. Julia, right? But nothing happened on this date. This date happens to be the 10th day of the fifth month, the date for the destruction of the temple. And we haven't really addressed that so much in this movement. Because originally when we had this date, it was uh, because on this date, the 10th day of the fifth month in the book of Ezekiel, in uh, chapter 20, Ezekiel is going to have the elders of Israel come and gather before him, right? And then he's going to give four chapters dealing with the destruction of Jerusalem as a prophecy. And, and that didn't happen there. On July 31st. So, so we have these dates here in this history. Um, and then we want to try to understand them. Now, again, this is the lines simply presented. But this is stuff that we should know. We should know this history. Now, what we can do is try to understand what this symbol is. So if we think about what happened, so what happens here on July 18th? What happens in this movement? A disappointment, wouldn't it? Okay, so so well, we say it's a disappointment, but that's a disappointment of Samuel Snow's letters, right? You understand what I'm saying? Right. So in Samuel Snow's letters, he has this date, July 18. Um, and we're saying that this history represents July 18. His history, his letters represent July 18, 2020. But yeah, so we have a disappointment and um, some people are waiting for this day to pass before they give up. And I'm saying, no, this is da this date is not gonna be the destruction of Nashville. Uh, if it was going to occur, it would have occurred around sunset on uh, July 17th, commencing July 18th. 
had lots of reasons for that, um, that belief that once it didn't happen at that time, I was pretty certain it wasn't going to occur. And, and I was actually doing a presentation on July 17th, dealing with how it's part of a failed a line of failed predictions. So, so when we get here to July 31st, I mean, definitely the disappointment is entrenched. And, but even before we get there, we begin looking at why we were disappointed. Now, a lot of these other dates we've never placed on a line. That is, we should be able to zoom into these different dates on this line and understand what they represent. That is, the other dates that we have in our line, dates that are events like December 6th, uh, we should be able to create a line with those dates. So I'm just going to get rid of this one for now. So I take these two, July 18th, Julian and Gregorian, as part of the same symbol. So what we do is we tie these two dates, the 10th day of the fifth month and the 26th day of the fourth month to, together. This is from Revelation 9, or maybe I'll do it this way. I'll say it's Lich. And this is from Ezekiel. Uh, maybe I'll do it the other way, because I want this to be clear. So, so this is going to be Revelation 9, which is Lich. And that's Josiah Lich, right? And this is going to be from Ezekiel, which is based on the prophecy of Josiah, right? That is Ezekiel's prophecy is using uh, the prophecy of Josiah. And both of these have a 391.5. That's how we came to July 18th in the first place, using the 10th day of the fifth month from Ezekiel, connecting it with Samuel Snow's letters. We came with the 10th day of the fifth month in 2020 using uh the prophecy of Revelation 9, Lich's understanding. We got this symbol, the 26th day of the fourth month, and that led us to July 18, 2020. Both of them gave us July 18, 2020 as a symbol. And both of them were based upon the 391.5. <clears throat> so both of them have given us July 18. And we decided that July 18 really was July 18 on the Gregorian calendar, even though Ezekiel's using the Julian calendar. Um, and it's giving us this 10th day of the fifth month that is July 18th on the Julian calendar. The symbol still is July 18. So we don't really have a July 31st, 2020. We have these two symbols and they both give us July 18, 2020. So what can we do with this? If we're going to uh, look at these lines and zoom into them or zoom into a waymark, can we zoom into the waymark of March 27th, 2021? Because this, this waymark then is going to symbolize midnight and this is going to symbolize, symbolize the midnight cry. And so, we should be able to create a line that addresses this. Because we're, we're going to have to have some way in which March 27th, 2021 has a purpose. Because we don't know of its purpose. Now, it is um, Passover on the rabbinic calendar. Rand, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And it also, Islamic was 813 and French was 77. 
Okay. And the, on the biblical, it's 1313. Okay. So we're going to take this March 27th, 2021, and it's going to be on the rabbinic calendar. It's going to be Passover. On the Islamic, it's going to be the 13th day of the eighth month. And then yeah. on the French Republican, it's going to be the seventh day of the seventh month. Um, we also have, um, if we took uh, March 27th, 2021 on the Julian, it connects us uh, to the 777 on the um, Mayan calendar, right? Sort of. Is that correct? I'm, I'm going for my memory from the past. I don't know if was I out on mute, but I, if you take that date on the mind calendar, 777, it's March 28th of 2020. Right. So it's March 28th. Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's not quite there, but it's it's almost there, right? So it's going to be the start of March 28th and the end of March 27th, right? Yeah, I think if you were at noon on March 27th, it would actually, that's when it would start. Right, because the mind calendar goes noon to noon. Well, at least that's the assumption on the calendar. Yeah, order. yeah. okay. So, but that's going to be the Julian date of March 27th. So, so March 27th has all of these symbols. It has the Passover. It has... Um, you know, I put 13th day, 8th month, you know, it would make more sense going 8th month, 13th day, right? Because we could see the 813, the symbol of Palmoni. On the French, it's the 7th day of the 7th month. And then on the Julian date of March 27th, it's going to be at noon, 777 on the Mayan calendar, right? So we have all of these symbols with this March 27th, 2021 but we don't have particularly an event. Now, when I zoom into a date or into a way mark, um, it is going to give me, I mean, I, I need to know what way mark I'm symbolizing, right? So that way mark is here, it's the midnight cry way mark. So we could call this the midnight cry line, so to speak. So this is just what we're looking at is we're looking at the lines that when we look at a line, we can zoom into a way mark and that way mark can give us other dates or events. Now, what we have to know is if this, there's a time of the end, right? So that's gonna be when the first message arrives. And this is one of those waymarks. And I'm going to say that this is the arrival of the second angel. And then um, when we go up here, we're going to have uh, the third angel arrives. And we need to know then this line, because there's always a period of darkness that precedes an arrival of a message. 
and some message has to arrive in this line that's going to prepare people for a message here. And then we're going to have um, a third angel arrive somewhere else down the line. And this is a way mark in which nothing happened in our line, but which we know is significant as a symbol. So is that making sense to people, what we're trying to do here? We're trying to expand out this line by zooming into the way mark of March 21st. So if we have a time of the end, we have darkness here, we know that we're going to have some of these way marks that we talked about. We're going to have way marks like December 6th. And, and we have to decide, you know, what is December 6th? January 6th. Where does this line begin? What's the time of the end? What is the darkness? Now, when we've been doing this in the morning studies, we've had uh, the story of, of the judges, and particularly like this morning, we were dealing with Deborah and Barak. So we had uh, stories that gave us symbols that we could then put on a line. But this story that we have here is a story that exists within our movement. And do we have a prophecy or something that can tell us more about March 27th that we can look at in our history to develop this line, something from the Bible? Because I don't think we can just construct this line without the Bible to guide us. So what's the primary uh, story that gives us March 27th. Or parts of the Bible that give us March 27th. Because it's a symbol of the Levites. So where do we go for that symbol? It'd be Numbers 3. We... Okay, so we're going to have Numbers 3. And? Acts 27. Acts 27, right? 327, March 27, right? So these are these primary stories that are going to give us this line. So what I'm wanting to demonstrate, and we're not going to get it done today, but for the lines simply presented, we, we want to be able to take this, this date of March 27th, 2021, and use these chapters to help us draw a line that relates to the Levites, that relates to this message that is an expansion of this waymark, so that we can see that that waymark is there as a symbol because we have something happening within this movement regarding this message to the Levites. So if we're going to look at the darkness, um, we're going to have to look at, at these passages, Numbers 3 and Acts 27. So hopefully people can get what we're trying to do. So I'm going to move this. There we go. Now, I want to go to the Bible. Now, one of the things that we did right after July 18th is we studied Acts chapter 27. And, and I want to go there first. Now, um, in studying Acts chapter 27, 
The reason we went there had to do with this fact that we had had this disappointment and we needed to go somewhere in our studies. Now, I'm just going to look some of these things up here in uh, the history of our studies. So it's just going to take me a second. I didn't look this up. But um, <clears throat> if we're going to understand the lines, and, and part of this is, is not for us to tell you what the lines are, but is to help you to understand the principles behind these lines and how these lines are created. So these lines are created uh, by a study of God's word. And um, when we go back to... Uh, we had a lot of studies. So this study is dealing with Acts. Um, so that's going to be in July. So we're going to have uh, Numbers 3 and Acts 27. That's going to be on July 26th. Uh, part 2 we do on July 20, uh, 27th. Um, part 3 we do on July 28th. Uh, part 4 we do on July 29th. And part 5 on July 30th. So we do five different studies dealing with uh, Numbers 3 and Acts 27. So the first one covers Numbers 3 and Acts 27, and the last four uh, just deal with Acts 27, because there's a lot more in Acts 27. <clears throat> so in this period of time, after July 18th, we're going to be looking at um, this number of the Levites. So it's not the first thing we do after July 18th, because first we, we um, uh, review some other things. I can't remember exactly what. I mean, I know that we do deal with the Mayan calendar date, and we go over that, and why we were disappointed. But we're going to look at this Acts 27 then. And um, so it's something that happens after July 18th. Now, when we have this period of darkness... What would the period of darkness be, and when would it start? Are we going to relate this message to the Levites um, having to do with the failure of the July 18, 2020 prediction? Or is there something else? So if we look at Acts 27, so let's read. And then it was determined that we should sail into Italy uh, they delivered Paul and certain of the other prisoners, um, one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus's band, and entering into a ship of Adra Ad Adramitium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go into unto his friends to refresh himself. Now, one of the things we see here in this first verse, what do we see that we should notice? What, what should we pay attention to here? Okay, who's Julius? What is Julius? July. Okay, July, right? And Augustus? August. Okay, so, so we have July and August here. Why?
Now we know that this study on Acts 27, we're gonna do at the end of July, July 26th to July 30th. Can we also relate Julius to the Julian calendar? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, so here we have, you know, these keys, these symbols that relate to our understanding of chronology, July and August, and also a symbol, the Julian calendar with the name July, because July is named after Julius Caesar, of course, and so is the Julian calendar. And, and so this is dealing with the journey of this movement. Um, now, what's Aristarchus? So this is going to be another person, Aristarchus. So he's the, he's a ruler, right? It's the chief ruler or the best ruler. Right? So we have Aristarchus. And he's a Christian, so he's he's going to be one of the three that are on this ship. So you're going to have Paul, um, uh, Aristarchus, and who else? Who is Paul traveling with? Luke. Yeah, so with Luke. Okay. So you got Luke. Uh, Paul, and another brother, Aristarchus. Okay. And we also have this ship of Adramidium. Adramutenos is what it says. A place in Asia Minor. Um, so what is that place? says, I shall abide in death is what it means. Doesn't sound like a great name for a ship. But, uh, or it's from that place anyway, a ship of Adramitium. Metium. So they, they're, they're meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia, right? They have Aristarchus, he's a Macedonian. So Macedon is an area north of Greece um, and uh, Greece proper, but becomes part of Greece and of Thessalonica, right? So Thessalonica is um, from the word uh, Thessalian. I'm not sure what it means, but um, and next day we touched at Sidon. So they're going to get in the ship. And Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends and refresh himself. So we're going to have this. Paul's on the ship and he's going to get, uh, when they get to Sidon, he's going to let him go and visit people, right? And when we launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus. So there's the island of Cyprus and they're going to go underneath it, that is south of it, because the winds were contrary. And so they're trying to avoid the winds that they would have to sail against. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. So they're going to change ships. And... Um, we're just going to go through this briefly. We're going to have to look at it in more detail. And when we had sailed slowly many days and scarce were come over against Snidus and the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salome. And hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh where unto was the city of Lycia. And now when much time was spent, 
and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed. So the fast is, of course, the Day of Atonement, right? So it means they're into the fall. And Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, so it wasn't a great uh, port or haven there, uh, the more part advised to depart, hence, hence also, so majority wanted to go, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lie toward the southwest and northwest. Um, and when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called the Euroclidum. So this is a east wind, um, um, sometimes called the Levanter, a storm from the east or southeast. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And the running under the certain island, which is called Clada, we had much work to come by the boat. And which when they had taken up, they used helps, undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest the next day, they lightened the ship. And the third day, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And that when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all the hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, we should have hearkened unto, ye, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Therefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country and sounded and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded it again and found fifteen fathoms. So we have here 1,440 inches and uh, 1,080 inches which together make how many inches? 25, 20. 25, 20 inches, right? And, and both of, I mean, all of these are symbols. The 1,080 is the number of parts in the Hebrew hour, and the number of minutes in a day is 1440, right? Also, of course, uh, 100th of 144,000. And... Um, and of course, the 2520 we understand as a symbol. So all these symbols occur in this verse. And, um, and then it says, then fearing lest they should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about <coughs> to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea under, co under color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. Paul said unto the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, he cannot be saved. Um, then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, this day is the 14th day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Now, if it's the 14th day, that's how many days?
13 days, right? And 13 days is uh, 18,720 minutes. Therefore, I pray you take uh, some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall be, there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. And they were all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out of the wheat into the sea. So in this story, we have these symbols of um, 200, three score, and 16, which is 276. And then we know that these, there is three, that's Luke, um, Aristarchus, and um, Paul, who are going to be symbols of the three separated from the 276 to get 273. And we have a similar thing that happens in Numbers chapter 3. So we're just going to go to Numbers chapter 3 really quickly and see these symbols. So <clears throat> um, there's going to be this numbering of the Levites, and that's going to be all of those that are a month and older. So all the males, and they're going to be uh, compared to the number of all the firstborn of the children of Israel a month old and up, right? So what's going to end up happening is they're going to uh, replace the firstborn with the Levites because the firstborn used to be the priests, but now the Levites are going to take that role, and there's going to be a... Um, an offering, right? So um, I'm going to do all the redemption money uh, to pay for uh, the, the firstborn, right? So I know we've gone over this before. And when you number them all together, how many are there of, and this is going to be here, the Lord said, Unto Moses, number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Israel from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. And thou shalt take the Levites for me, I am the Lord, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle and the Levites, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of the Lord. And Moses numbered, as the Lord commanded him, all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and all the firstborn males, by the number of names, and from a month old and upward, of those that were numbered of them were 22,200, three score, and 13. So how many is that? 22,200, three score, and 13. That's going to be two, 22,273, right? Okay. So that's all the firstborn among the children of Israel. Now, when we numbered all of the, 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 the children of the Levites, there's actually going to be 22,300. But they're going to say in verse 39, all that were numbered of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered, at the commandment of the Lord throughout their families, all the males from a month old and upward were 22,000. Even though when you add up the total, it's gonna to give you 22,300. So one thing we see is that three is separated out. Just as we saw in the book of Acts, those three from the 276, we're gonna have three that are separated out. Now we're gonna have 300 that are separated out, not counted. And numbers 327, is verse 372, referring to Kohath. Okay, so thanks for that bit of information. Now, then they're going to, uh, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. For those that are redeemed of the 200 and threescore and 13 of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more than the Levites, thou shalt take five shekels apiece by the pole after the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take them. The shekel is 20 gears. And thou shalt give the money wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons. And Moses took the redemption money of them that were above that were redeemed by the Levites and of the firstborn of the children of Israel took he the money a thousand three hundred and three score and five shekels so one thousand three hundred and sixty five shekels and Moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons according to the word of the Lord so I know we're already going over time a little bit but we're going to come back to this again uh, next week and we're going to see how we can take this story of Numbers and of Acts 27 and how it can give information about our movement, how to put March 27th, 2021 as a way mark in our line, how we can actually expand it out to be a line. Now, um, if you notice that this number here, 1,365, uh, even though it talks about 12 tribes, there's actually altogether 13. And if you divided this by 13, you would get 105. Um, if you subtracted 105, you took the Levites out from the 1365, you get 1260. So here we have a symbol of the 10th day, the fifth month. We have a symbol 13. Um, and if we had 13 days, that would be uh, 18,720 minutes. We also have um, uh, the symbol of the 273, of course. So all these symbols are here in this story, and they tie us to the story of Acts 27. So, so I believe that we can look at, at our history and see that this story and the story of Acts 27 can come together to create a line dealing with March 27th, 2021, that's going to address how this line unfolds and where it ends. Okay? And we will see how that works. Any questions before we close with prayer and anybody who of course is watching this video and has questions can always write them in the comments does this seem like a reasonable proposition uh, for somebody who's trying to understand the lines to go through and create a line from these stories from these chapters And so I want people to try it out. So first off is I believe that Numbers 3 is going to represent the first angel's message. And Acts 27 is going to represent the second angel's message. So that we're going to have, like we see on the board behind me, we see that, you know, Numbers three over here, that's going to be the first angel's message. Acts 27 is going to be the second angel's message. So numbers three is going to give us the way marks and the symbols to lay out these dates here. And Acts is going to give us the symbols to lay out these dates, Acts 27. And then we can understand what this line is. Okay. So uh, let's close with a word of prayer. <clears throat> the dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. I know, Lord, that um, we are looking at the lines simply, but we should be able to see how these lines are formed and structured. 
you should be able to understand how to lay out a line. And I pray that you can help each person who's studying these things uh, through your spirit over the next week uh, to give them light on understanding these lines. Be with us um, through the rest of the day and bring us together again to study your word according to thy will. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.